Here is how to make the Super Walrus V2 mod. This pen mod takes very long to make, so be patient when doing all the steps. Here are the pens you will need. Two compasses, two hybrid gel grips, two white doctor grip grips, four air fit rings, one super parat. Penwish sells these super parats that are already rubbed, so I recommend getting one of these so you can save some time making your mod. One sailor grip or some pads that are the same size. And lastly, two tool stick ballpoint pens, which are unfortunately discontinued. Here are some subs for the tool stick ballpoint tip. I haven't been able to get my hands on these stick tool pens, but fortunately, Super Waller said that in his original explanation that in order to get these HGG tips to fit into the tool stick tips, you'll need to file down these HGG tips so that these metal tips will fit into the metal G3 tips. So if you have the original tool stick ballpoint tips and you're able to fit an HGG right into a metal G3 tip, you will be able to make the mod following the steps in this tutorial. You'll be able to make the complete original mod However, if you're like me and you're looking for a tool stick tip subs, the Metal G3 fits pretty well with the steps from the original explanation. So if you're going to make the mod like it originally was with the tool stick ballpoint pens, if you get your hands on some of those, or if you want to use Metal G3 so it follows the same steps, you're going to file down your HGG tip to 10.8 millimeters. However, I think the closest in feel for the tool stick ballpoint pens would probably be the Uniball Signo which is a very commonly used pen because these look really similar to the tool ballpoint stick pens. Um, they have a very similar tip. It's just the tool is a little bit shorter and probably a little fatter. The grip is also pretty similar because it fits on the Comsa back plug. However, the major problem with the Uniball Signo is that the HGG tip has a really hard time fitting inside of the Signo. You're going to have to sand down your HGG tip quite a lot. As it says here, you're going to have to shave it down to pretty much 4.9 millimeters and this takes quite a while so I don't know if you really want to do that but it will feel pretty similar because it is a similar tip. As for the current tool ballpoint and the tool gel pens these are retractable but the main problem with these is that the grips are too big for the Comsa back plug so you will not be able to use these and as you can see compared to the Signo it's quite a bit shorter and it's also quite a bit fatter and I've tried these out and these don't really feel great when you're spinning them. I do not recommend these for spinning or inverting because they're really fat and short. However, if you do want something that's like a tool tip and you want to have a difference between a Signo and a tool tip, like you want to go with the tool tip, um, you pretty much just need to sand it down to the same length um, and make sure it fits inside the tool tip. It will just be the same as the Signo. So um, you can just choose which one you prefer, but I would highly recommend using the Signo. And the last sub I'd like to recommend is the Pilot Juice Up. It's very similar to the Signo tip in the shape and it's pretty big. But the best thing is that you don't need to sand down anything. The tip just goes straight in like that and it's perfectly flat. As you can see, there's nothing showing. However, the Pilot Juice Up tip is pretty heavy. It's 2.63 grams. While stuff like Signos and G3s and stuff are in the 1 to 2 gram range. So I'd actually say that if you want your Super Walrus mod to be super heavy, you, and you don't want to sand down, you can go ahead and use the juice up tip. So that's my quick overview on the tip sub since it's pretty hard to find the tool stick ballpoint. I haven't seen one pop up since 2017. Um, but I would definitely recommend the Signo because that's the closest pen sub there is. You just have to sand down a lot. And the G3 is probably the next closest because the steps are super similar and the way you file down the HGG tip ends up pretty much fitting in the G3. Here are the extra materials you will need. You'll need one skateboard ball bearing, preferably one with a rubber shield so you can pry it off real easy. You'll also need a piece of paper so you can do the air fit assembly. You'll need six Penwish O-rings. And Super Walrus recommends in his original explanation to use a metal G3 tip to check when the HGD tip is sanded down enough so it'll fit in the tool stick ballpoint. So you'll need this regardless if you're using the metal G3s as a tip sub or if you're using the original tool stick ballpoint tips. And I recommend using an RSVP for the cap, specifically a cap that is cut right before the bumps here. This cut RSVP cap is really nice for when you wanna hollow out a cap using an X-Acto knife when you don't own a drill. I personally don't own a drill or have drill bits. So this is a really good tool if you also do not own a drill, but you do have an X-Acto knife and you wanna cut the cap and you don't wanna also cut your hand. So this is something I really recommend you do. And I'll show you how to do this in the tutorial if you don't own a drill. Here are the tools you will need. Now for the tutorial. Before getting started, make sure you wear a mask and proper eye protection since there will be lots of sanding and cutting steps in this tutorial. Now let's get started. Take your commsas and remove the caps. 
If you have a drill or some drill bits, go ahead and hollow out your comsa cap. But if you're like me and you only have an X-Acto knife to hollow out your comsa cap, go ahead and take an RSVP and remove the cap. Now take some tape and put it right below the bumps on the RSVP cap. Now take your saw and saw off the RSVP cap below the bumps. Now take your sawed off cap and file it as needed. After rinsing, your cap should look something like this. Now take one of your Comsa bodies and put the Comsa cap back on the pen. Take your cut RSVP cap and put it on the Comsa cap. To hollow Comsa cap while it's on this body, what you're going to do is you're going to take your X-Acto knife. You're going to put the X-Acto knife right in between this gap here, between two of the nubs. What you're going to do is you're going to lean your blade forward and then you're going to push back. You're going to pretty much lean forward on that nub right there and you're going to cut the top and then when you push back you're going to cut the bottom. I want to tell you not to use too much force because you might accidentally cut through the cap and if you're not using this RSVP cap right here it's a very sure way to cut yourself um, so be very careful while you're trying to wiggle through the nubs as you go around and eventually you're going to cut through one of the nubs by just wiggling it very slowly. You're just going to feel it come out And you're going to continue this all the way around until you cut all six of the nubs on the Comsa cap. As you can see, I've already cut one right here. And you don't have to cut through all the way to the bottom of the nub. If you just cut most of the top, you can actually pop it out at the end. Once you feel that all six nubs are cut most of the way through, and you can tell by the fact that it's leaning to one side or the other, and it seems to be pretty weak on all of the sides, what you're going to do now is you're going to take off your RSVP cap, and you're going to push down on your Comsa cap until you hear the nubs pop. You can go ahead and slide off this hollowed part out of the Comsa. And now you have successfully just done the hardest part of the tutorial, which is just hollowing out the Comsa cap. And if you push down on a Comsa cap and it doesn't pop, that just simply means you need to keep hollowing it out some more. Now we're going to repeat the same hollowing out with an X-Acto knife step for the other cap. We're going to put the X-Acto knife in between two of the nubs. You're going to lean forward. And then you're going to push back. So what I'm doing is essentially I'm leaning forward and then I'm trying to cut this part of the nub and then I'm leaning forward again and cutting. I'm just going to keep going around for all six nubs. So once you think you've cut down the Comsa cap nubs enough, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. You're going to take off your RSVP cap. You're going to take off the Comsa cap and then you're going to take your Comsa cap and you're going to push down until you hear it pop. Go ahead and let out the hollowed out piece fall out. Once you have finished hollowing out your Comsa caps with your X-Acto knife, take your tool stick ball point or your tool stick ball point subs and remove the tips. Now take your tool stick ball point tips or your tip subs and see if they lie flat against the Comsa cap edge right here. If your tip tends to wobble a little bit and it doesn't lie flat like this, it has like a little bit of space, that means the nubs aren't cut down very far. So that means you're going to have to file down these bumps until your tip sits flat. Repeat this for the other cap. Once you're done filing both caps, go on ahead and take your hybrid gel grips and remove the tips. Take your metal G3 and remove the tip. Now take your HDG tips and file them down until they fit into the metal G3 tip. For this step, I recommend using one of your HDG barrels so you'll have some leverage while you're sanding. I also recommend checking your HDG tip with your G3 tip every two or three minutes just to see if it fits. This process does take a while, so it is good to know when to stop. In the end, the sanded down HDG tip should look something like this. If you're planning on using the tool stick ballpoint tips or G3 metal tips for your mod, this is about as far as you need to sand for your HDG tip. But if you're planning on using Signos, which is what I recommend, or if you're planning on using the current tool retractable ball points, you're gonna have to sand down your tip even further so that the HDG tip will fit inside of the tips. In the end, the sanded down HDG tip for the tool or signal should look something like this. Repeat your respective sanding steps for the other HDG tip. Take your sanded down HGG tips and put them inside your tool stick tips or your tool stick tip subs. If you're worried that your HGG tips are going to fall out, 
You can wrap them with some Teflon tape before putting them inside the tips. Now take your skateboard ball bearing and remove the shields. Take your pliers and apply pressure to the space in between two balls until one of the brackets pops out. Now try to tear out one of the brackets by wiggling it loose. Remove the other bracket from your bearing. Now move all the ball bearings onto one side. Push on the inner race and the ball should fall out. Take two ball bearings and clean them with some rubbing alcohol. Wrap your ball bearings in Teflon tape until they fit inside the HDG tips. Take your Penwish O-rings and put three on each cap. Now take two AirFit rings and put them on the caps with the flat side facing the Penwish O-rings. Here's how to remove the AirFit ring from the AirFit pens if you're not sure how. Take your Dr. Grip grips and cut them to the same length as your tool stick tip or your tool stick tip subs. Make sure you cut them from the lip side so that an air fit ring will be able to fit in it. Now take your doctor grips and put them on the caps. Now push your tips inside the caps as far as possible. Now make sure the edge of the doctor grip and the edge of the tips line up. Now push your air fit and your o-rings towards the doctor grip. Take two more air fit rings and a piece of paper and trace out two circles onto the piece of paper. Take your scissors and cut out these two circles. Take these pieces of paper and put them inside the air fit rings. Take your sailor grip and cut two one sections off of it. Now super glue these sailor sections inside the air fit rings. Now super glue the air fit rings onto the doctor grips. Let these caps dry for about two to three hours. Now take your super parat and remove both the caps and the tips. Cut off the blue piece from your super parat barrel. Now take your pliers and remove this little blue piece from your super parat. Empty out the rest of the super parat barrel. I will quickly note that Super Walrus in his original tutorial says that he doesn't want you to cut any of the barrel. He just wants you to remove this blue part but the problem is when you try to remove just only the blue part, it's insanely difficult to file down and hollow out this blue part in the back. It's really hard to just try to pry it out like I showed you earlier if you don't cut any of the barrel. While when you prepare the barrel like this, it's really easy to just pry it out because there's some glue that makes it stick inside. So if you want the barrel to be full length, um, you're going to just cut off the blue part and you really need to file this down all the way. As you can see, this one is already filed down for another mod but it's actually really difficult to even file it this much because in the next few steps, you're gonna put a COMSA back plug in here. I recommend just cutting a little bit of the barrel. Anyway, you'll be extending the COMSA back plug a little bit. I think what Super Waller said was a little bit negligible. You do lose about maybe a half millimeter or millimeter from your barrel length, but I really think to save you like the 30 minutes it will take to hollow this out using like an X-Acto knife or something or a needle file, it will just take way too long. So I recommend just preparing your super parat barrel like this. Anyway, in the later steps, you'll be extending the barrel. You only really lose about a millimeter or half a millimeter at most. Now clean your super parat barrel using some acetone and a Ziploc bag. After a few seconds, the tech should start sticking to the Ziploc bag. If you have any chalkiness or residue left on your super parat body, clean it off with an eraser and a paper towel with some acetone.
In the end, your super parat barrel should look something like this. Now take your super parat barrel and cut off the entire front tip. Take your Comsa bodies and remove the back plugs using the remainder of your Dr. Grip. Now cut 1.4 centimeters off of your Comsa back plugs. Hollow the front of your Super Pirat barrel using an X-Acto knife and a file until a Comsa back plug can partially fit in it. In the end, the front of your barrel should look something like this. If either side of your Super Pirat isn't flat, go ahead and file it down. Now file down one of your Comsa back plugs until it fits in the front of the Super Pirat barrel. I will note that this filing step isn't in the original explanation, but I will note I actually did crack a Super Pirat barrel putting one of these full Comsa back plugs without filing them down in. And as you can see, this one's filed quite a lot um, compared to the one I have here on the table. And this one is so thin on the edges that it's really prone to cracking. And this still doesn't really even fit in here. Um, so I would recommend making sure that you file down your Comsa back plug a little bit. I think Super Walrus may have missed this step in his explanation because there's no way a full Comsa back plug can fit in it uh, without cracking. Um, and this was a very nasty surprise. I highly recommend filing down your Comsa back plug because I did crack a Super Pirate Barrel putting in a full Comsa back plug. Now take your tool stick ballpoint or your Signo and remove the grip. Now cut two sections of one to two millimeters off of this grip. Now take these grip sections and put them on the Comsa back plugs. Now take your file down back plug and put it on the front of the Super Pirate body. Now take your unfiled Comsa back plug and put it on the back of the Super Pirate body. In the end, your finished body should look something like this. If either of your back plugs are loose when putting them in the body, go ahead and wrap them with some Teflon tape. Now we're going to wait for the caps to dry. Once your caps have finished drying, take some Teflon tape and wrap the back plugs. Now take your caps and put one on the front and one on the back. And there you go. That's how you make a Super Walrus V2 mod. If you like this content, please don't hesitate to like or subscribe. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, please feel free to drop a comment below. Also feel free to support my Patreon as I'll be making more tutorials in the coming months. And credits for this mod go to Super Walrus, whose original explanation is in the description below. As always, this is Sept, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you wear proper... Make sure you wop... <laughs> make sure you whopper.